Hi, welcome to a mail call. It's the first time. Let's see what we got here. Got a package from Tony's Train Exchange. Gotta know what's inside, but let's go ahead and open that up. In here, got a new command station DCS 240 plus. That's pretty cool. And also in SE 74. Let's put this aside. It's got the manual there. A little air pocket. Local net connector. And the actual command station itself. So I should be able to just drop this in to my existing wiring. And make use of it. But there's a few new features that are different between this one and the one that I already have. Uh, first, it's got a built-in USB here, so you can actually connect this to your computer, which is a handy thing to have. Because uh, before, it was another yet another device that you'd have powered up. It still has three connect uh, local net connections here you can either run it five amps here or eight amps provide eight amps of power uh, through these plus and minus here uh, let's see programming a programming B a general ground here and the rail a and rail B so this is all the same as their other one and this actually comes out so you can disconnect this and it's pretty much the same form factor um, I don't recall that my my old one had actually rubber feet on it but maybe it did they just fell off um, but yeah there's uh, some items to go through here um, that I won't bore everybody with, with you, but uh, about the differences in these between this one and the DCS 210 that I have right now. So that's one thing that came, and then the other thing that came was the SE74, which is a controller for doing signaling on your layout. So I found that even though I don't have signaling yet, that having having the Digitrex things at hand on hand to do discovery work is actually Kind of critical in this era of digital command control so you get yourself familiar with what all the different things do so this one's actually 
This comes in a larger form factor. Looks like they put, ah, yes. They put down this, I hate, I hate styrofoam. But it's a good thing to protect the pins from damage when it's in transit. And then it looks like, um, oh, we've got a free signal head there. And then this is what the signal heads look like um, from Digitrax. I'll just slide out there. And there's uh, six LEDs on this. And it slides down to this. And then I believe that this will go down onto one of these 10 pin connectors. So there's S1, S2, S3, and S4. But like I said before, I'm not gonna bore everybody with going through the entire manual here, but save that for another time. So we will say, uh, yeah, what do we use this for? You can connect it up to four SE1 Digitrax 10 pin ribbon connectors that connect to four LED signal heads each. So therefore, on, on each one of these uh, 10 pins here, you can have four LED signal heads. And you can connect to four uh, switch solenoid or slow motion turnouts. And I'm guessing that's here. And yes, so that's similar to what you get with an uh, DS74, but this is for, could be for other purposes. If you want to automate both the turnout controls and the signal heads at the same time. And of course you've got your um, local net connector. So the DCC signals or the, or the local net signals that go across between all the Digitrax components can work together. So, um, let me switch up cameras here and talk about a couple of uh, things that have come up since I did the live stream this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Dwight from Curly Express for the shout out. Uh, that was really appreciative, especially uh, got a few more subscribers, although as my good friend Andy Andy says, yeah, don't worry about subscribers. Just worry about content. And so thanks very much, Dwight. Um, getting a little bit more attention there. A few more people reached out, and that's always good. Um, the second thing came up was while he was doing that shout out, he mentioned something that I'd overlooked and not, not really paid attention to is that uh, uh, Jason Wilson, uh, the train freak, um, has been running or recreating, I should say, a railroad variety show uh, similar to what Roy Smith had. Um, he's, he's setting that up under his own, he's got his own Facebook page. Um, I think that's great that we have, we have somebody to step up and do the whole variety show. I certainly don't have time to put together all the content and uh, that's great. Um, so what's that mean for the layout photos of the month from Roy Smith's N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision Facebook group? Well, I'll continue to publish those um, as long as we continue to get people posting photos, their layout photos there. Uh, that was the whole purpose of doing it in the first place when I started that back in May. And now we have over a year's worth of uh, content. I think we have from uh, July of 2023 all the way up to uh, what's upcoming will be September 2024. 
uh, available for people to go back and reference and look at it in video form of some of the sam uh, sampling of some of the layout photos. Um, so as long as that continues, uh, I'll continue to publish those. Uh, the one reason why it might not is if uh, uh, Roy Smith's family uh, says, oh, we'd appreciate it if you don't do this anymore. And I would, of course, I would, I would uh, stop the shows at that point. Um, the other reason, of course, if I'm not able to, um, I suppose I could lose interest, but I'm, I'm committed to this. And it's uh, now that it's manageable, it's only once per month that I have to put together all those photos instead of what I was doing. I was doing it once every week to get this caught up. Um, it's actually a lot easier to handle. So I'll continue to do those. Uh, but I would encourage you all to go and participate in, in the Train Freaks uh, new channel. I think that's a good thing that we've got uh, that going now. Um, he's, he's running, I think he'll, he'll, over time, he'll evolve away from, right now it seems very similar to what Roy does, or Roy did, but uh, I'm sure that uh, Jason, who runs that channel, will take it in its own and new, interesting way. And certainly he's got a lot of energy. He does a lot of other things. He also seems like, uh, um, that right now he's got about 2000 followers, which is 10 times what I've got, which means his outreach is more, and that's always a good thing. Um, we've, everybody's got a ways to go to catch up to where Roy was at. In fact, I was looking at it today. Roy Smith had the same number of followers as a popular show on the, uh, that's been out there for a while, um, Ken Patterson's uh, What's Neat This Week show. So, uh, well, they both had almost 17,000 followers. Um, and what's also interesting, if you looked at any of the recent model railroaders, uh, October issue, I don't have it here, just got it today, uh, actually has an advertisement for Ken's, Ken's, uh, show and they're out and uh model railroader is actually a sponsor of his so it's kind of cool um he's had a number of different sponsors uh yeah when you get to be a larger larger channel size people reach out to you uh and, and that's that's cool uh, i enjoy his show it's not for everybody uh but uh in any case um, yeah, I just wanted to do this little mail call, short mail call, and a little, short little update. Uh, one last thing is a channel member, John Paulson, or actually somebody this morning asked me, what was the size of my helix? And it is, measures just over six feet by four feet of the total space it's consuming. And then, uh, from side to side. Uh, it's 40 inches, so it's three feet, three feet, six inches um, is the por portion that holds the track. And then, um, but just to answer that question, and I'm going to take off for now. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye. Oh, please like and subscribe, and follow these videos that might be here, and here and here. <laughs> okay. Bye for now.